Hey everyone, welcome back to another live broadcast of the Engadget Podcast. I'm senior editor Devendra Hardwar. I'm joined with our reviews editor, Sherlyn Lowe. Hey, Sherlyn. Hi, I was just burping. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Make sure to put that right in the mic next yeah. time. Yeah. We can't, we can't lose all ASMR. that. ASMR. And our podcast producer, Ben Elman. Hey, Ben. Hey, straightforward episode today. No world famous physicists, no extra <laughs> guests. Oh man, that was uh, that was fun. If you guys missed out, thank you for joining us, everybody who's here live. But be sure to check out last week's episode. We talked with Michio Kaku. That was a lot of fun and uh, like a lifelong dream happening here. Uh, let me just make sure we've got all our good stuff. Do we have any people we want to shout out in our chat? It's um, <laughs> kind of quiet today from MC. From MC. Yeah. Hey, Mark Gell. Yeah. Uh, did you, okay, so uh, yeah. maybe we should have done this before we started the stream, but did you uh, send it to Mike to tweet it out? Oh, yeah, so we, we did all that. Okay. We did all that. Great. Don't worry. Wanna, Don't worry about that. I want to say hi to Chris Reardon, who's on the chat already. Yay. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Chris. We are going to be talking about a couple of things, uh, mainly NVIDIA GTC this week, but also some Surface Laptop Forward news. As always, you're going to be watching us like make the show. So we're going to be doing our discussions. We can't stop to answer questions, but we will do Q&A in between some of the segments. And especially uh, today, Sherwin's going to show off the uh, the OnePlus watch. Then I can show off this time, actually show off. Actually, actually show off. Um, but yeah, seems very exciting. Hello, <laughs> hello. Hello, Rohan Ayush. We've got Hello. a Julio Barrientos who in is the chat. That? I don't know. Yeah, Who's I don't know that? who the hell that is. Sounds who is extra. That? <laughs> uh, we will certainly talk about the Surface laptops. I have one running a battery test right here, actually. So I'll pull that up during our Q and A. Um, but yeah, beyond that, I think we are good to go. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we got we got people in the chat. Opened Evans Wonderland and K Z. -Z I don't. Che Che. I think that's Che Z. Che Z. Thanks for joining right. us. We to it whenever we're ready, I guess. I think we're good. <clears throat> Let me just take a sip of water. Okay. Kind of in my way. <laughs> Get your mic situated, all that fun stuff. It's like I'm in prison, just like there's two bars anyway. What? This bar isn't surrounded by bars. There's a bar mm -hmm. here. And then there's oh, okay. A oh yes, okay. I, okay. Not the fun type of bar. Anyway. Mm. Yeah, no such let's uh, let's start. Yeah, let's just get to it. Let's get after it. <laughs> I'm between bars, not behind bars. There we go. Ahem. All right. Okay, go. <clears throat> What's up, internet, and welcome back to the Engadget Podcast. I'm senior editor Devendra Hardwar. I'm reviews editor Sherlyn Lowe. This week, we're going to dive into some of NVIDIA's news from its GTC Developers Conference. We've got some fun laptop news from Microsoft. The Surface Laptop 4 was finally announced, and Sherlyn's going to be diving into her uh, fun experience with the <laughs> OnePlus Watch. <laughs> Stay tuned. As always, folks, if you're enjoying the podcast, please be sure to subscribe on iTunes and your podcatchers of choice. Leave us a review on iTunes. That seriously makes a difference. And drop us an email at podcast at engadget.com. Let's move right into NVIDIA and what's going on this week. It is, uh, it's GTC week here. And that is a week-long developer conference where NVIDIA kind of goes deep and tells us everything it's working on, some upcoming hardware and things like that. I'll tell you guys most of the announcements, and I sat through all the briefings and sifted through all the press releases and everything. Not really for us. A lot of it's for folks like Anantech and uh, you know the TechCrunch side, like business news, uh, cloud news, data center stuff, and AI news. But there are some things I found kind of interesting. Um, I wrote up the news around their first data center CPU, which is called Grace. After um, what was that? Grace Hopper. Grace Hopper. There you go. Oh. So let me let me Take say that again. again. Yep. I <clears throat> I covered their first CPU, Grace, which is named after Grace Hopper. Uh, it's their first data center CPU. So that's the key. And it's ARM-based, which is kind of interesting because uh, right now in the server and data center world, we're seeing a shift from x86 uh, Intel and AMD-based CPUs to ARM-based chips. And ARM, if you've been listening to the show, you, you, you kind of know what we're talking about. Those are mobile chips. Those are the things that are in your smartphones, uh, in a lot of tablets. Uh, they are smaller, more power efficient, um, and getting more and more powerful every day. 
um i looked at this nvidia news it seems a lot like what uh what apple did with the m1 chip uh whereas apple was aiming for hey we don't need intel anymore on the on the desktop side or on our you know pc side uh nvidia is kind of doing that with the server side because now they don't need to you know ship these chips that are paired together with nvidia or with uh with any x86 hardware. So that's not even Intel or AMD hardware. They can kind of own their own lane here. And Grace is a powerful new CPU that's going to be in supercomputers down the line. They've got several partners already. Um, it's interesting news. It won't directly, you know, it won't directly affect any of us. But I do think like this is a big shift towards ARM. We're seeing more and more people do this. Have any thoughts on this, Sherlyn? I mean, the shift towards ARM, like you said, is interesting. I, I wonder if like data center CPUs need a lot of power or or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know need to be more mobile need to be more power efficient i mean in general obviously power efficiency is better but like a data center doesn't seem to need battery life <laughs> they don't need battery life but they certainly <laughs> these centers draw power right power is the is the resource that we're still talking about when it comes to computing uh, it is the big controversy around bitcoin and other digital currencies because those things require power to you know process their currencies so Power is still a big thing. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's all also about um, carbon usage and things like that. So if mm -hmm. you're drawing more power, you're hurting the environment more. But also, I think on a fundamental, you know, money level, uh, moving over to ARM chips just means you're paying less for power on your servers, which is good. You know, more efficient, yeah. capable servers. These chips are still really powerful. You look at my review of the, uh, the you know, Apple M1 and the MacBook Air and everything. I was shocked by what that little chip could do and really go toe to toe with the x86 the big stuff from intel mm -hmm. and amd so we are getting a, this is like a really interesting inflection point um i do think nvidia is just taking a solid first step here uh they have announced some initial customers that includes um let me see here the swiss national Com supercomputing center the cscs and the department of energy's los alamos national laboratory they're both going to be having grace powered systems in 2023 powered uh built by Hewlett Packard Enterprise. So these are these are these are big deals. And Nvidia yeah. is taking a big step here towards um not a new market because they've had um you know kind of supercomputer tech around before, but certainly a market that is um kind of a leap beyond what they're capable of doing with the x86 stuff now. So related to that, uh if you don't care about servers or data centers, fine. But Nvidia also announced that they are working together with MediaTek to bring RTX graphics to some ARM-based laptops, which is also kind of interesting. It was just it was just one paragraph in the news, right? But it is a really intriguing paragraph because they're like, well, uh, imagine future Chromebooks, right? That have a MediaTek ARM processor that is power efficient, very thin and light and everything, and maybe a little powerful, but also has an NVIDIA RTX graphics card that is kind of wild to me. Thoughts on this, Sherlyn, because this is your uh, kind of your wheelhouse, the uh -huh. ARM computers. I, uh -huh. I, 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 I saw this headline just now <laughs> for the first time, and and you know, on our right before we got on uh, the live stream, you saw how I reacted. I just laughed out mm -hmm. loud for like a minute because I know Media Tech has been really has been around for a long time, and yeah, in the past yeah. decade, and and minus the last few years, but in the decade right um before today it's been sort of known as that like cheaper alternative to qualcomm uh yeah. and often mm -hmm. has a bad rap for like just not having the same muscle um and you know because it's cheaper and not as powerful media tech chips are widely popular in things like smart home devices because you don't need that much you don't need to be that fast mm -hmm. um smart display smart home devices that sort of stuff and now to hear that they're targeting ARM-based laptops with, by teaming up with NVIDIA for ray tracing graphics, that's just <laughs> intriguing. Because first, let's let's yeah. decide the idea that it's just ARM Chromebooks. Because right, right. it feels like ARM and Chromebooks is kind of an, an okay mix. You know what I mean? Like not a lot of power necessary. Not, not I mean, it seems perfect for a type of computer that I don't think is a right, like a fully limited, capable very limited. PC. Yeah. Right, yeah. exactly. Like th that's the right ish os for arm right mm -hmm. it feels like but maybe it's because there's always been software limitations on windows side that makes it hard to see arms full prowess mm -hmm. anyhow but like in, in that scenario in that use case situation ray tracing well what are you doing on chrome i OS? don't 
listen, I don't know how much of that we'll actually see, but it is certainly the power of RTX graphics. That's what they're kind of getting at. So you're not going to be playing like, you know, Destiny 2 on a Chromebook, maybe natively, but maybe some, like, I don't know what MediaTek graphics I, yeah. technology is like, right? So they're not like Qualcomm, which actually does get some decent GPU stuff. Apple de custom developed their own right. GPU for the M1 chip. So graphics is more and more important these days. That's all. Yeah, so for I mean mm -hmm. for for people at home who are curious to see if like one of the devices you own has an a MediaTek <laughs> processor to see how it performs, MediaTek uh, device. I mean their chip names start with the model number MTK, and then you mm -hmm. know either a Helios something or other is one of their newer <laughs> CPUs. And they've had better architecture over time. They're really chasing the five G game. They you know uh, I think fairly recently announced some sort of five G collaboration with a big company. I'm not recalling off the top of my head right yeah. now either, but. MediaTek is really trying. Um, I, while I still see software being a potential challenge they all need to overcome, because yes, mm -hmm. you have the power of ray tracing for gaming, graphic editing, and video editing, perhaps. there's The apps need to support it. The emulator needs to not be clunky. There's, there's a lot still in between, but it's nice to see ARM get mm -hmm. a lot of love. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we are certainly Apple's move last year with the M1 oh, kind yeah. of shifted the entire landscape and we saw what was possible. Um, but that's also, you know, a very custom specific processor built for Apple's hardware and stuff. So now we're seeing how is the rest of the PC world going to be able to catch up. And certainly Windows on ARM is a thing we've looked at for years. I'm not a big fan. I've never liked a Windows on ARM machine. You've reviewed a couple, Sherlyn. Uh that's more oh. Microsoft's problem of not yes, yes. not even making apps properly compatible or giving us a good backwards compatibility layer in the way that Apple did. Because with Apple, it's like it's just all seamless. Like they have an x86 layer. Older apps work mostly just fine and in many cases are faster than many x86 PC laptops. Surprisingly so, so yeah. Surprisingly, Here, yeah. Rosetta is doing, an, Rosetta is the name of their emulator and it like yeah. does an amazing job. Holy crap. It's not meant to stick around forever. <laughs> like mm -hmm. Apple is fully moving to ARM. I think that commitment to trans, like migrating fully to ARM is what's driving some of this like race to build ARM machines. Because they're like, oh, the M1 does so great. Mm -hmm. We replicate that. Well, certainly that does seem like the future, right? We want, everybody wants thin and light machines. Like that mm -hmm. is the hot sexiness that everybody jumps for uh, in PC hardware. But there are limitations in what you can do with x86 chips. Uh, AMD only recently started like making small power efficient laptop chips. Intel's really struggling with that. So if you want, if you want like a magical laptop, right, that weighs under one pound and mm -hmm. still has a decent screen and everything, like, you know, we're going to need to rely on mobile chips. I feel like the Surface Pro X was the kind of a good glimpse at where things could go on the high end. But uh, I hated that device. I think you hated that device too, Sherlyn, uh, because it was an ARM chip and Windows on ARM is just not ready yet. <laughs> Hoy, 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 hoy. We could we we've talked about this. <laughs> Microsoft fans are gonna come for my DMs. We're just we're just gonna leave it at that. Yep. So <laughs> I'm gonna transition, I'm gonna transition right to Surface Laptop here. But Ben just wanted to confirm you have a backup going. Back recording's all good. Yes. Okay, okay. Hey, since we're, we're for Paul, yep. I wanna shout out a user in the live chat whose name okay. is I can poop twice a day, yay. Hey, me too. <laughs> good, also, for you. good for you. Good for you. So, MediaTek with Nvidia and Samsung with, and the battle will be legendary. Uh, is their comment? Mm. And hey, yeah, hey, that plus sure. your twice a day bowel movement that'll all be legendary. <laughs> I love it. You gotta stay regular. Every I you gotta know. keep the market regular. So, so uh, one time yeah. I it, it just to. Uh, uh huh. Whatever. Let's not so, even, so, let's not yeah, even do the poop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was, it was about to be something that had to do with poop, but like, let's uh, just nope, let, nope. let's let's go to Surface Laptop. That's way yeah, better. Speaking of poop. Um. Okay. <laughs> I, I will do a Microsoft transition here. <clears throat> you could just say like, speaking of Surface Laptop, or speaking of Microsoft, because yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the last thing that Sherlyn said. I know. I know. I have something in mind. Don't worry. <clears throat> so speaking of Microsoft laptops uh they announced the surface laptop for this week this is the fourth iteration of their most uh normal surface right the surface laptop is just a laptop it has a nice touch screen it has like the same uh was it three by two aspect ratio that a lot of the surfaces do so it's kind of a square screen but beyond that 
it's a uh, it's a uh, kind of a minimalist uh, PC. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like Microsoft was really chasing the MacBook Air with these things. But the weird thing is, um, I remember the last time they announced some Surface devices, Sherlyn, we went to an event in New York City. There's a lot of news happening all at once. They announced uh, the first 15-inch Surface with some AMD Ryzen chips. Nothing has really changed since oh. that event. So these new Surfaces look exactly the same. They're still 13 and a half inch and 15 inch models. Uh, the big difference is now you have a choice of AMD processors and Intel processors across both. Last time it was just uh, kind of an AMD special choice on the 15 inch. Um, but yeah, they didn't really change much, which is to me kind of disappointing. Um, mm -hmm. I do like it when Microsoft is like pushing boundaries a little more but they are just being super reserved with this laptop. So I actually have a 15 inch Surface Laptop 4 right here uh, next to me that I'm testing. And man, looking at this thing now, it's like, it is a nice looking machine, but I really wish those screen bezels were slimmer. Mm. You know, I really wish it looked a little more modern. I would love a little more connectivity. Um, the nice thing about the hardware changes is that it does support 11th generation Intel processors. So, you know, the really cool Intel XE graphics, you know, that you can get that as a part of things. And the Ryzen chips look good too, but mm -hmm. they're only Ryzen 2, uh, Zen 2 processors, not the newer Zen 3 hardware that we're seeing in every laptop this year. So once again, Microsoft feels like it's a little behind the curve. Um, yeah, I'm working on my review right now for this thing. I kind of want to call it the Norm Core laptop because it is just so, it's it's just fine. It, it is the laptop for when, you know, um, your grandma or grandpa or somebody walks into a Microsoft store or a Best Buy or something. It's like, I need, I just need a laptop. I don't need anything fancy. Um, this is the simple Apple-esque uh, decision that they can make um, personally. And so I'm going to say this in my review. I think for the price and certainly for the hardware, you, the XPS 13, the XPS 15, <laughs> they're right, they're right there, they're right I'm there, and they have beautiful sure. screens that don't have edges. Yeah. When you started talking about this, I was like, "When's he going to bring out the Dell XPS?" Yeah. 15? Mm -hmm. When am I? Or any really any other major laptop, right? The NV, the HP NV lineup, um, any of the major companies. I just, I'm a little sad here. Probably more in line, but yes. The Spectre, yeah, the Spectre right. lineup. Um, yeah, it's a little disappointing. And really just talking to Microsoft folks, like they're like, they're always talking about what they can remove from the laptop experience to make it simpler. And maybe for a certain audience, that is what they need, certainly the more mainstream audience. But there are just so many disappointing things here. Um, there's still no Thunderbolt support. So if you don't, if you want to connect a really modern, um, you know, storage device or something, or even an external GPU, which is a thing some people do. Uh, you can't do that with this because for some reason, Microsoft just doesn't like that uh, interface. Thankfully, there is USB-A, there is USB-C with USB-C charging. That's something they introduced last, uh, during the last round. But beyond that, man, it is just more of the same. So look for my review soon. Um, we also saw a bunch of modern accessories from Microsoft, which I think are more... These are the new things. These are the things they haven't done in a while. There's a modern uh, Microsoft webcam, which is the first uh, webcam from Microsoft that I, I've seen in years. They used to have like a Life, was it Life 360 or some type of uh, Life branded webcam? But it is kind of cool to see that they're just getting back into really bread and butter basic accessories. So they have webcams, they have multiple headsets. Um, you know, they have a $100 USB-C speaker that can also take uh, phone calls or Teams meetings and things like that. They've even revamped the Surface headphones. Uh, there's a new Surface headphones two plus model that has a Teams button on the side, which, okay, I, I don't know. Maybe somebody who uses Teams a lot will really, really love that. But, you know, it's just, basic stuff that you'll be seeing in stores from Microsoft, basically. So this feels like Apple-esque moves, uh, simple hardware. I need a webcam. I need, you know, a headset with a microphone. Go to the store, see this thing, has Microsoft's name on it. Seems just fine. Uh, oh, that the previous Microsoft webcam I was thinking of, that was the LifeCam HD 3000, which came out in 2011. And they kind of gave up on that a while ago. Yeah. Um, just, just interesting to see. So nothing super exciting. There's no, no real new Surface tablet hardware. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there, there's nothing super interesting or bold that they're doing. Maybe they're saving that for the end of the year. This is the sort of like mid-year lulls we're in.
Mm-hmm. I suspect I suspect that's also why they did it without fanfare, right? Like usually yeah. when when they have a big set of things to announce, we go we have an event, and whether it's virtual or in person, usually also to me the October surface event is usually the fun one. Um, that's when they save all the interesting news. I do personally like the Surface Laptop like line. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. yeah. I, I used the Surface Laptop 2, I think, as my main for a while. Of yeah, yeah. Two, I guess. And really, it's simplistic. It's minimal. I like it. It's got all the basics right. Mm-hmm. Um, well, how long ago was that, Sherlyn? That was like three years ago, right? Yeah, if it was the Surface Laptop 2, it was like that long ago, three years yeah. ago. And my, and my main gripe with it back then was that like the proprietary charger, it was a proprietary yep. charger, not USB-C charger. But they've yep. you know, changed that. They've changed that, but the basic shape of the the case and everything right. exactly the same. This it's the still, screen tag exactly it, the same. Yeah, exactly the same. So there is no like modernization. I carried the uh, the original Surface laptop around for a while after I reviewed it, and that was four years ago, I yeah. think. Like in just reviewing the stuff now, like the hardware just hasn't changed. They've moved away from putting Alcantara on everything. So this one I have right now is just like a nice straight metal uh, case, but beyond that. It, it is all the same. So, hey, disappointing yeah. to me, but I'm sure mainstream people will be really into it. And I will I will say for their accessories that you were mentioning, a lot of my uh-huh. uh, friends, I guess, I don't know if in tech or not, but some of my friends actually really like Microsoft's, like, mice. Um, yeah, great mice, great keyboards. Yeah. They not do. enough love for their keyboards. Exactly. So it's nice to see them mm-hmm. do a, a webcam. I might, I might want to look into that. <laughs> You may want to, uh, but really, just just go Logitech. Really, this is, the, this is the fight. And also, for when it comes to keyboards and mice, it is really the fight is between Microsoft and Logitech. Mm. I'm a Logitech fan right now, but I've certainly used a lot of Microsoft stuff in my day. I use a Logitech mouse and a Logitech webcam right now, so totally. There you go. And super like so Logitech is just a cool company too. I did an interview with their CEO several years ago. They are so humble in a weird way and not very like brag uh, they don't really brag as much um as much as other companies so anyway check out that piece too Sherlyn, let us move on to your review experience with the one plus okay, watch okay. which uh sounds like just pure drama to me so i don't even really know where to start with this but okay one plus watch is the company's first ever smartwatch and you know, if you've been following OnePlus News for a while now, you'll know that the company actually has been working on a smartwatch forever since <laughs> at least 2015. Back in 2016, co-founder and then director, he doesn't work there anymore, Carl Pei, tweeted out some pictures of a smartwatch that was that never came to be, um, that they've been working on, some sketches. So it's been a while. The reason I give you this background is because after playing with the OnePlus Watch a bunch, it feels like this is the watch they were preparing to launch like all that long ago, like all that <laughs> years ago. Because so much of what we have with it is outdated. If it, it doesn't compare to modern smartwatches, the only things that OnePlus has done to differentiate here and and has executed well anyway is fast charging and the price. It's hundred and fifty nine dollars. Oh, okay. And mm-hmm. yeah, and it promises to get you like a seven days of juice and twenty minutes of charging, which is like a vague number. I don't like seven days of juice because that's a really silly number. <laughs> but it's about like from zero to forty three percent, and that's that's well, I say zero, maybe one, one to forty three percent. But <laughs> but like it's impressive. It's very fast for a smartwatch, and smartwatches are slow when it comes to charging. Mm-hmm. So. Those are the two saving graces about this. Let's jump into like whoa, this whole review experience. Holy crap. L- let me just say your first line in our notes <laughs> to talk about this review is shit, shit, <laughs> shit. It's so shit. And I feel like that should have been the title of your review. <laughs> I, I, I try to refrain from <laughs> being too extreme in our reviews and uh, it may like some things deserve it come on i i mean i feel like i, I did a <laughs> fairly scathing review but i also <laughs> in my head and i shouldn't but in my head i can hear all the oneplus fans coming for me so i'm just like mm-hmm, oh, mm-hmm. i'm just tr- a, also trying to be fair so anyway um normally when you get a watch to review you know you start playing with it and you get like um 
the guidelines as to like how to set it up and everything this and then you start having problems and questions and whatever and you start talking to the company reps and you have like a dialogue i had questions for oneplus like wednesday or thursday I sent them thursday i never got a response until like they were silent until like monday the day before the embargo lifted mm-hmm. and then all throughout the process, the updates were coming like fast and furious for me. Like I just kept getting update notifications. <laughs> like, how many times do you update this watch while mm-hmm. I'm reviewing it? And these updates were to fix little things like, oh, oops, sorry, automatic workout detection wasn't working. Here you go. And then, oops, uh, we're, we're not doing that mm-hmm. uh, prompt you to move thing. Uh, now we got it fixed. So oh, here you go, another update. And uh, at, whenever you have a, a, a review that's starting to go bad like this, you A, wonder if you have a, you know, defective unit or b and and b is like is everyone having the same experience or did you do something dumb like as a reviewer (laughs) i'm always like what did i get wrong like did i because you can't you can't just go to google right and search around for things so you have to talk to other people in to only know what's going on yeah yes so i'm lucky and blessed enough hashtag blessed to have like a group chat of like reviewers who i know also will have the OnePlus watch and we were just talking Mm -hmm. about it and all of across the board our experiences were equally shit and like (laughs) not even even on the exact same things some of us had the exact same experience on things but some people were like oh this works for me but that other thing doesn't work and it's it's like we all instead of hearing back from OnePlus as to how to fix what issues were going on, we actually like just troubleshoot like we had to troubleshoot <laughs> ourselves. So you were doing the work for them because they're gonna yeah. take your findings and put it into the product too. So yeah, huh. and so I think I only started ch- checking in with a group chat uh, a, a couple of days into the review period because I was like, wait, wait, this is this is, not, this is like this is not just <laughs> this is pretty bad. <laughs> I did have the group chat, which involved it included like reviewers from other sites like Verge and and Wired and uh, Gizmodo. And I said, hey, who else is reviewing this thing? And I said, who else is reviewing the OnePlus Watch? And from Verge, Dieter and Dan were in there. And Dieter was like, do you mean the Amazfit? I was just like, oh, that's such a perfect analogy. This is exactly one of those like white, what do you, what's that word for? White label, I- white label white OEM label. type stuff. Yeah. White label, yeah. This is exactly the kind of like cheap $20 mm-hmm. watch you can get off of like Amazon with that same sort of basic software, you wouldn't expect mm-hmm. this from a OnePlus. Like OnePlus, <laughs> come too far for it to be de- de- delivering things like this anymore. I'm, I could go on on this mm-hmm. rant forever. Like, yeah. I really can you talk more about the software? Right. So what you're saying is yes. this is a like a very localized software system, right? This isn't. So, uh, it's not Android Wear. Right. It's not Wear OS. It's using. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's OnePlus's own version of an RTOS, a real-time operating system. And mm-hmm. RTOS, mm-hmm. Uh, if you've read a lot of the reviews, you will know RTOS is basically the same base for a lot of things like the Amazfit or like, you sure, know, sure. all the watches we see on the show floor of CES that don't have a big company behind them, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. So it's very basic. You can swipe sideways to see some widgets and there seems to be a limit on how many. Um, and then you press the top button and you can scroll through a vertical list of all your apps, which are few. And uh, then you can swipe up to pull down quick settings. You swipe down, sorry, swipe down to see your quick settings and swipe up to see your notifications. Oh my gosh, when we talk about the notifications, holy crap. (laughs) First of all, a few of them, like some, there was a glitch during the review process where like one notification would come in on your phone, but the watch will ping you four times about it. Like four (laughs) notifications. on the watch so like Mm -hmm. i thought my friends were being annoying for texting me too much and i was almost going to yell at them i was going to be like shut the f up you assholes and it was just a watch this is how you talk to your friends by the way oh yeah (laughs) yeah. (laughs) truly i'm always just like you mother yeah and Um, they're like why are we friends with this girl yeah i don't i don't get it anyway Uh um but so that's one issue and then the other thing is like on some apps like um WhatsApp, Telegram, uh, some other messaging apps, I believe Signal and Line. I'm not up to speed. I know WhatsApp and Telegram for sure. Anyway, mm-hmm. in those apps, you can choose to send a reply via the watch. Mm. Thanks, right? Isn't that great? Yeah, okay. The replies you can send are, okay, in a meeting, call you later. <laughs> Driving, call you later. And like, see you soon. Or like the third one is, the fourth one is just like four, three words or something. And I can't remember the exact. But like, that's it. That's the four. 
you can say uh-huh. one of those things. And so like us, the group chat reviewers, we were just trolling each other, like replying to the group chat with these like canned messages. Like, oh, in a meeting, call you back. Oh, driving, call you back. Like, you can't change these. You can't go into the <laughs> app to, like, you know, set up your preferred uh, dictated reply. Yeah. You can you do reply. voice replies? No, you can't. No? You, can't. Mm. you can take calls on the watch, but you can't dictate a reply for some reason. There's mm. no, like, a speech recognition engine. Um, <laughs> anyway, so that's clunky as hell. And that's, like, even Fitbits from, like, three years ago fixed that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. It's and basic Fitbits can do that now. The Charge mm-hmm. Four or the Versa can already do that. So anyhow, yeah, trying to like calm back down to like. <laughs> let, let, let me just say, like everything you're talking about, Trillin, does harken back to our advice to never buy a first generation product from a company going into something new, right? This is these are all first gen problems that it sounds like they're dealing with, right? Absolutely, they need to learn, and this like mm-hmm. we grant I'll grant them that this is an affordable product, and on some level it works. And but like, <laughs> yeah, if that's the best thing I can say about it. It works, and it charges fast. And uh-huh. hey, great! I took a fitness tracking a bunch. Like, um, I I was like pretty nuts, and I took like the Galaxy Watch Active, the Apple Watch, and the OnePlus Watch out to like the gym. All on your wrists at the same time yeah and i'm not testing the sensor <laughs> accuracy there so i don't uh, that's not the best right way right sensor accuracy but i'm more looking at overall kind of what the differences are in the experience so mm-hmm. which one interrupts you the most which one um you know has like the in, gives you the best readings like displays the um your session details afterwards in the nicest mm-hmm. way and to be fair I like OnePlus's layout. When I'm done with a run, it'll show me like, oh, here are the here are the number of minutes you spent in a certain zone. Like you were fat burning mm-hmm. a lot of time. You were like at like ex- your extreme end or at your peak most of the time or something. It's nice. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't have a lot of the issues that some of the other reviewers had throughout the review process. A lot of people were saying uh, the steps were being undercounted uh i know michael fisher mr mobile he had a garmin on and the oneplus watch on at the same time and his count was off by about ten thousand steps <laughs> that is not as bad as poor yeah. Victoria song from gizmodo who i didn't speak to during the review process because we're not in the group chat we're not that close as friends um i don't know on a personal level but mm-hmm. Her review was just like a joy for me to read because like it was like <laughs> someone else that I didn't speak to had the same experience and it was much worse. She took it on a walk where like I think uh, the Apple Watch reported either 10,000 plus or 100,000 plus steps. I don't know. Big number. Can't remember the exact mm-hmm. number right now. 100,000 would be a lot, a lot, a lot. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a lot. The OnePlus Watch said it counted 103 steps. Like what the hell? what (laughs) imagine if you're like yeah for me i'm trying to calculate my calorie burn quite like when i'm going on like a workout right and like you're there trying to like gauge your your performance Mm -hmm. and the your watch is telling you you got 103 yeah literally the most basic thing a smartwatch needs to do you can buy a hybrid watch that doesn't even have a screen that can count steps these days so Yeah. yeah if you fail at that you fail at life you know it's like going to a restaurant and like the most basic dish they can't even cook so and and oh well. yeah, I hated wearing this to sleep, so I like wore it <laughs> for as as little time as I could. Like the second I woke up in the morning, I threw it off, like, off. That sort of thing. Like that's how probably I- not a good sign. Probably, <laughs> yeah. probably it's, not. Yeah, it's huge. One of our biggest issues with it is that like it is mm-hmm. freaking like one of the reasons I probably got some inaccurate readings during my workouts is because it's too loose for me. It's ridiculously loose. I could swap it out, yes, for a tighter uh-huh. band, but you're already like what. Why can't I just pay less than people uh, at the same price as people getting the big one? Why do I have to pay more mm-hmm. because I have a smaller risk? Like, this is the opposite problem of, like, the, mm-hmm. you know, the people. The Apple carry. thing. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. anyway, that's uh, that's my rant and my my. So, so I'll, I'll say it doesn't sound like this device shifts our uh, smartwatch recommendations for people. If you have an iPhone, just, just get an Apple Watch, an Apple. most likely. Or get a Fitbit if you like to go specialize. Or get a Garmin if you really, really like to exercise and want to yeah. have full GPS, right? For Android, it is... What, what are your choices now for Android? Fitbit so, and Samsung? 
yeah so so for the app first of all for ios the mm -hmm. OnePlus watch is not an option it's just yeah yeah now. so um for for yes for android users i mm, i used to say the galaxy watch is my <laughs> go to used to love the galaxy yeah. watch I do still, and it's really good, honestly. Like Tyson OS is still very good, but uh, mm -hmm. it had issues when I was working out with uh, being. It's a little, especially if you're running. Like if you're a runner, you go for Garmin. If you're a runner, the mm -hmm. Galaxy Watch Active might not be great because it was really annoying me the whole time. Like I was running, and then every time I was like, "Good work, keep up this pace for another thirty <laughs> seconds." I'm like, "All right, cool, thirty seconds. Good work, keep up this pace." I'm like I don't need you to freaking. I don't want to keep looking at my wrist. I'm yeah. in the zone running. And then they're like, too slow, speed up. And then too fast, slow down. Stop like, looking at your wrist. Down. <laughs> Calm down. Exactly. I don't need you to. Anyway, that's my main gripe, I think, right now with the Galaxy Watch. Um, it also had some like distance measurement issues, but not as bad as the OnePlus Watch. I feel like it came quite close to the to the Apple Watch and the actual distance that I walked um, outside. But yeah, the Galaxy Watch is still one of the better ones for mm -hmm. Android uh, phone people. But I'd say like it sounds like now that Google and Fitbit have completed their merge, yeah. I, I'd hold off and wait to see what they do because mm -hmm, that actually mm -hmm. would be very interesting. That would be like the uh, the Apple Watch equivalent to Android, right? If just Google yeah. finally, yeah, fingers crossed, maybe by the end of the year. But it, wearables are such a weird market, folks. Like not much has changed for so many things. I have a fourth gen Apple Watch, which I think was the big redesign and still don't feel compelled to look at any of the newer stuff just yet. So we'll see. Keep an eye on all of our coverage of all these smartwatches. Anything else, Sherlyn? I mean, yeah, just to quickly like wrap mm -hmm. up that Google Pixel thing, a like Google Fitbit thing. There were rumors of a Pixel watch late yeah. last week. Yeah. Um, I think mm -hmm. Friday or so. So it sounds like something is brewing. So yeah, like Devendra State said, yes, it's not super exciting right now <laughs> in the land of smartwatches. They don't they've they've kind of like found their place. And I think that that you're not going to get too much new and exciting out of them after this. But if you're interested in keeping tabs on your health, they're fairly helpful. All right. Let's move to Q&A. Yeah. Yeah. So Chad, if you have any questions that you want to ask, now's the time to ask them. That's uh, the time. So I'm going to like read a bunch of chat stuff. I think Sherlyn sure. should start getting the macro camera ready. Um, I, would I do like have the to... surface right here. Yes, here. I would like to do the surface right after we do yep. all of the chat questions. So uh, Chris Angelo Perez says, I'm living for this OnePlus watch segment. Ah, thank you. Great. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, Jordan Malfara. So this is... Uh, going back to all of the previous segments also. So we're talking about like um, NVIDIA and like servers on ARM mm -hmm. and all of this stuff. So Jordan Mofara said that he wants a consumer NVIDIA um, ARM chip that su supports full RTX and DLSS. Tegra is good, but the future is going to be great mm -hmm. for low power gaming boxes. Yeah, I didn't mention Tegra actually because that was NVIDIA's last big ARM push, but yeah. I think we're kind of we're going to be kind of getting there. Tegra was not great, honestly, up until it hit what was it, the Nvidia Shield and the Nintendo Wii, uh, the Nintendo Switch, and the Switch was the first Nvidia thing to really tick off. And most people don't associate that with Nvidia's hardware, but certainly, I think future Switches, you know, could, could have an ARM chip and could have like that sort of hardware. And I don't know if RTX, but certainly DLSS would be would be really nice because what that does is it renders games at a lower resolution, uses AI tech to kind of upscale it. And I use it a lot for PC stuff. It looks really good. So yeah, there's a lot of potential here. I'm really waiting to see what NVIDIA does. So I can poop twice a day. Yay mm. says they're looking forward to Exynos and PC. Are we? Are we? Sherlyn? I'm sure you have something to say about Sh that. Sherlyn um, is... Uh, she's yeah, doing she's... connecting. Uh, yeah, we don't... We haven't really liked any of the Exynos hardware. I think that's the thing, right? The, the Exynos hardware is typically... When Samsung puts it in its uh, in its devices, they're typically slower than Qualcomm chips, even though you're paying the same price. So, I don't know. I'm interested to see what all these companies do. Mm -hmm. um, seeing if there's any recent chat things that I'm not quite getting to um then we've got another comment from who is it rohan ayush who says mm -hmm. that windows should improve software for arm if apple can why not windows that's a uh, big yeah. question isn't it that's what we're saying that's <laughs> what we've been saying for years yes 
That is a true statement. I don't know what Microsoft is doing. The big thing is, right, Windows has to support a ton more devices than Apple does. It is a lot harder to drag a whole platform to a new platform, you know, if you have to deal with third parties and random accessories and lots of third party software. Apple doesn't have to deal with that as much, but they have certainly done better about supporting older tech and their Rosetta emulation is just good. Whereas Microsoft, I think they're eventually going to have some sort of emulation on the on Windows on ARM, but that's not there now. It's kind of a pain. Uh, so Josh Sesh Davis says, can you just give the OnePlus watch review in one word? I'm going to let Sherlyn That's do... Sherlyn's thing. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think this. the most common word in our notes here is shit. So yes, it's, it's shit. OnePlus shit, yeah. Okay, we're, yeah, we're... It, Sherlyn's having a couple of um, small... Uh, like tech problems. Uh, we can't quite hear you. Yeah, you, you, you're. You need to enable your mic or something. All right. How's this? Can I? Can you hear me now? Hello. hello? Uh, yes, I can hear you. I don't know what happened to Devendra now, though. Oh yeah, Devendra dropped out. <laughs> We're taking turns. To... <laughs> anyway, I'm here. Hi. And you wanted uh, uh, the review in one word? Was yes, it? the review in one word. What is the review in one word for the um, OnePlus watch? Is what the fuck a word? Like, I, just... what, I mean, WTF I is an acronym, three. but... Yeah. Uh, how about... Man, I'm trying to come up with this, is like, a word. Man. I know, but I'm trying to come up with like a, a better word that will like... Wow, all of you. Um, uh, I don't know. I don't have a good word for like. Can I? Can I have more than one word, y'all? I can say disappointing. I don't know. You, you, perplexing, yeah, you have to. You have to ask Jash if there's uh, so many. But but if you can give me more words, I can come up with something better for you. For uh, sure. How I about a to... single sentence? How about like a okay, five a or single six sentence? sentence? Yes. Okay, so uh. What good is fast charging and long battery life if the watch itself is shit? Okay. There you go. That's good. That's All right, really so the we're main takeaway. Yeah, we're getting our macro camera uh, ready. Eventually, Devendra will be back. I have no idea what's happening. Maybe it's the platform that we use to stream this. Um, I hope that. Okay. Yeah, I hope I don't get uh, booted myself. <laughs> no, I think you'll be fine. I'm trying to figure out my. Ooh, I think I think <clears throat> I got it. I just realized that um, my framing has to be super tight. So there we go. And uh, I am about to get the this set up to show you guys the OnePlus watch. And then the Vindra will show you all the Surface Laptop 4 in a little bit. Yeah, so we were going to do the Surface Laptop 4, but then we had uh, started having some internet issues. Everybody has them. Um, yeah. My issues were more that I tried to plug something into my laptop and uh, hit the power button. Oops. When I did that. So. Okay, so SK Henderson, uh, Anderson, I'm seeing in the chat, says, can you talk a little bit more about Grace, the um, server oh. farm? Uh, I don't know if that's your spe specialty or if it's Dev's specialty. The, so we Dev can... would know more about Grace, but it's uh, it's, it's not it's not the server farm. I believe it's a CPU for uh, for servers or for databases or data centers database server centers whatever the word jumble salad of that is uh but is what the arm based architecture uh arm based processor for those cpus i don't exactly know the details on that the vendor really spent a lot of time covering nvidia's gtc for us so we'll maybe wait for him to come back because i don't want to sound like a silly fool i am trying to get this to zoom in so that you don't see what's going on here but oh yeah and you're still having the problem with like the droopy yes camera. it is definitely droopy i'm going to grow grab a little thing to make this okay yes yeah, so nicer. <laughs> I'll be right back. it's the ben show then um Hello, everyone. Uh, yeah, so I was thinking about just like reading out uh, a comment or something, but uh, you know what? Like, 
Uh, there's a comment from Steel Digital that says that Mac has yet to peak once they get an M1 chip into the iPad or a convertible like two in one form factor. Um, it'll be really good. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to the possibility of uh, whatever new MacBook Pro might be coming out later t later this year. Um, I am tell I told everyone that I was saving my stimmies specifically oh, no. for the the possibility of a new MacBook Pro, but we'll see if it's as good as um, some of the leaks and rumors hope it to be. The thing that the I'm... M1 MacBook Pro? No, no the the new one. Um, that's supposedly coming out later this year. I'm one of the big things I'm hoping for is um, uh, a return to MagSafe. Oh shit! Oh shit! I hit the Bixby button. Bixby! Bixby! Okay, here we go. The buttons on this damn Note 20 Ultra are not very. So there this isn't your daily driver either. This is just a a. It's like my weekly driver. Why do I hear two things? Oh, oh. because yeah, you should mute the um Yep, I just phone. did that. Okay, good. Okay. And I'm trying to Ooh, oh, god damn. Sorry. All right. And we can do this. There we go. That's what I've been struggling. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Come on. Why isn't it working? I don't know. Get tighter. Oh yay! All right. Also, this little cloth is what I went to get, so you don't see my knee. It's so <laughs> awkward. <laughs> You're not allowed to see Sherlyn's knees. Yes, it's really incredibly awkward. <laughs> Look, I have very uh, Jonathan nice Anderson knees, in okay? the chat says droopy gimbal. Which, uh, yes, that's no. true, but it also sounds like a, a euphemism. <laughs> huh. um, oh, my TV so Sandip McCall says, uh, is Intel going to work on any ARM-based chip? It, now, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, Intel working on something ARM-based seems like it would be a conflict of interest, right? So uh, I, I don't know the word conflict of interest, but yeah, I think Intel is firmly x86 architecture and... Uh... It doesn't sound like they're going to. It, I, I guess it's like, I don't know if by conflict of interest, I mean like they don't have like investments in something else. They're just straight up competition. They're not, mm, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, but but I, I don't think they are. It doesn't sound like it would be like huge move if they did. But that's really more Davindra's speed than mine. Okay, I think, oh, hey, Davindra's back. And I think I've got the gimbal to uh, stop floating or to stop yeah, to stop being I can show groovy. you guys. Yeah. Someone, the go. user, someone who is completely fine said, knee reveal now. No, no. you're not getting that. Eh, maybe. We'll, we'll do a little tease. <laughs> no. Let's not. Only, yes, only, only knees. knees. <gasps> <laughs> uh, I was playing with it, but I realized that you guys can't actually see it yet. You can't see the knee. The knee is here. Stop it. <laughs> uh, right. So, um, Devendra, can you uh, comment? Yeah. Uh, can you say anything more about uh, Grace, um, like in Nvidia's Grace project? Because someone was asking mm -hmm. while you were uh, out. Mm -hmm. Well, answer uh, that, and I then mean, you can get back to the watch. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if there's more. So go check out my coverage of that. Uh, I don't know if there's more to add beyond what we saw. I think Grace, it is like a compelling thing because Nvidia has never made a data center CPU before. Right. So normally they have taken their graphics and combined it with either AMD or Intel's chips and sold those as like standalone systems like the GGX. But uh, no, no. Uh, Grace, Grace seems cool. Check out more of our coverage. And certainly if you want to get a deep dive into the chips, I think of Nantech and those folks really do a good job of that. By okay, the way, so, for those mm -hmm. on the live yeah, stream, I, if you were just watching the, the the OnePlus watch, it took God knows however long to take a heart rate reading, which was really long. Well, I mean, it was like probably 15 seconds, but uh, that's really long these days. Imagine if I was like not resting my hand. Also, this reading is super off because I am not that calm right now. My heart yeah, rate like, is more like... 56 mm -hmm. BPM is like asleep, Very. isn't it? <laughs> well... 
it, oh, this thing reported resting. my resting this thing reported my resting heart rate as like 43 like come on i know i'm fit but i'm not that fit like um, am i dead like come <laughs> is, on. That, is that necessarily fit yeah that's more like so uh, uh i didn't wear this just with a I hate quick yeah. google search on uh according to the mayo clinic a normal resting heart heart rate for adults ranges from 60 to 100 beats per minute mm. so mm -hmm. 56 beats per minute is even lower than that if yeah. you look at resting heart rate measurements though athletes go down to like 40 yeah. something sometimes and then if you look at resting heart rate alone between 45 and 65 i think is the range in general Ooh, damn um blow me out but... of the water with stats that's... but um you are also but that's because not... i've reviewed so many of these things you're like, also not a tour de france athlete though yes i'm not exactly <laughs> anyway take a look this is the watch so first of all this is the tightest it can go. And I think the last time we did this, we already showed this. But if, you see the, if you've seen our review, you'll know how loose this is for me. I can still stick an entire extra finger in there. Mm -hmm. um, of course, this angle is a little awkward right now for me to do that. Um, the screen is nice. We've said this in the review, and everyone said this. Like, that's the nicest thing about this. Look at It's nice, right? It's you know responsive. And here are all the things you can do. Devendra, I'm going to mm -hmm. un, un do not disturb my phone if you want to send okay. me one of your trolley messages again like you oh did yes before. i can let me um, let's see let's see if this works let's see if i can reply to you i can't reply to sms messages by the way so <laughs> don't sms text me um i can possibly reply to hangouts i think let's get um, that right on camera let's see if it appears yeah all right it just vibrated oh oh yeah oh, oops oh oh the other number is fine so yeah, the Vendor hardware, the other number yeah. is some sort. Some That's not even robot. my, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a robot. It's like one of those spam messages that I get. So can't now I can't. Message. Where's my lovely message? I can't see your freaking. And then uh, I got two. I got. Why did no, you get I mean, two? I so is this I have an actual bug that you're showing off now? Um, ish. I mean, I have two messages on my phone that are unread. One is the one that the Vendor just gave sent. Ah. And another from this 347 number, which is like a delivery service that's like, oh, your thing's been delivered, that sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, I mean, is it a bug? It seems I very responsive as you're hitting the button and nothing is happening. Yeah, that I know. is also not a great, uh, not try, a great Do song. you want to try to hang out me something, Dev? <sighs> uh, sure. Let's, oh, here, uh, let's see. What? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Hold it a little bit closer to the camera. So it just, uh, just like, yeah. Okay, so I need to go. It, it back. came eventually. There we go. There we go. Ah. There we go. Important message for Shil and Lo. So, uh, I mean... Govind Balaj says uh, Fossil is better. What, what do you have to say yes. about that? Yeah. Oh, good. oh, I got another notification and I was like, careful. <laughs> um, Follow Instagram at Gadget on Instagram. Uh, so, yeah. Compared to Fossil Watches, Fossil Watches use Wear OS, and Fossil yep. also has done its own um, software tweaks to improve the health sensing experience on Wear OS. So mm -hmm. it's actually fine. Yeah, it's not as cheap as Wear uh, as Fossil yeah. Watches. I mean, there sorry, Fossil Watches that, are not as cheap. Yeah, they're a company that also built watches. Like they are watch experts, right? So yeah, that is, and their watches that's generally like their look thing. better, yeah. right? Like if you look at this, this is kind of a basic design. It's fine. Uh, I get annoyed by the screen timeout options. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the screen timeout limits. It's like eight seconds. Here are the different watch faces. One thing that um, OnePlus tries to do differently from Apple and Google is that like instead of closing your rings, you fill them out mm -hmm. on the quadrant. Now, the other thing I want to show you guys is this uh, OnePlus health app. And basically, it. I'll show you like... I'll, it's one of my biggest issues with it is how hard it is to navigate. And it's mm -hmm. really pretty ridiculous. So at the top of the app, you have this like report card. I haven't worn the watch in a while now. So I'm actually going to try to look for historical data. Um, and uh, so this was the week I spent time like testing it actively. And you can see this, these quadrants, I mean, these circles. Let's see if I can go back to that. They won't even show me my statistics for that day. Amazing. Just, Amazing. I, and then, okay, never mind. Let's go look at all my workouts logged. Look, 
have you ever wished you could see your <laughs> complete total time spent working out of all time ever since you bought a watch? Because if you do, I have the watch. Yeah, for that's you. a useful piece of information. Not weekly, not monthly. I can't, you know, uh, I, if you're in the week, in the time view, you can't see anything. You can see yeah. all time numbers, all the workouts logged. And I, I find that so useful data in like an RPG, right? Where it's like total time log in this <laughs> yes. RPG. You spent How much 40 time hours. have you wasted away yeah, on Final, Final Fantasy, Fantasy 7. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, so for example, too. Okay, the, the other thing, let's say I did um, the fitness run. So this was an indoor run, and I like the info they give, right? They score you. They tell you your pace per mile. This is completely wildly off 20 minutes. That's nuts. Uh, cadence. You can tell that I was running, 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 and then I just gave up and stopped and mm -hmm. started walking for a bit. Um, uh -huh. And then my elevation jumped up. You know why? Because oh, my elevation jumped up because I took the elevator back up to my apartment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> which is, like, really funny. Um but this is this is nice, right? I like this representation. It tracks the real time heart rate. I peaked at one seventy eight, which is weird because the machine told me I peaked at one eighty two. But mm -hmm. um, let's go back to the main home screen. All right, at the bottom of this page, this is how you navigate the app. You've got health, fitness, and manage. What do you think you would see under fitness, Devendra? I don't. I don't know. Like you, uh, your exercises. All the, yeah, yeah, all the things that we saw just now under workout logs might show up there in a nice, you know. Uh -huh weekly this is what you see <laughs> this is absolutely it's, useless running and walking it's That's just running and fitness. walking yeah and like there is a, there looks like there's supposed to be a map here <laughs> what, what what i'm sure that'll come in an update Sherlyn. So, like, yes this is, a, exactly. this is something so, that's coming over time was like it's coming in an update but then one of the things was like they were bragging about doing their briefing to me about the watch way back before it was announced it was oh, like man. we got twice the number of gps than other watches i'm like okay well great for you anyway, anyway. i'm kind of i'm kind of trolling here because you can go into um the individual things and actually pull up the map so let's go for the one in brooklyn whoops this one even then it's like it doesn't track other things uh, it, it, so after yeah. it does track your cadence and this was when like uh, Brian and I were in Brooklyn Park I can uh, actually track Prospect that Park. that actual Prospect trail because I used to live the right there the big park yeah. in Brooklyn the big yes, park in Brooklyn I but I also know from Brian's apartment up the park to Grand Army Plaza I yes. can totally see yeah yes exactly so here here is here's the uh -huh. map I mean it's fine it's yeah but don't don't inaccurate. out Brian's location exactly. he's trying to keep himself secret well you know He's uh, he's uh, he's you know, y'all. He's in a big building. Anyway, um, this Timotius Petrus also... says to be mm -hmm. honest, even Xiaomi and Ho and Huawei have better smartwatch features integration. Yeah. Xiaomi the... knows the shit. Yeah, yeah. personally, it, uh, they personally own a Huawei GT, Xiaomi, a Maze mm -hmm. Fit, and now a Samsung Active Two. It's mm -hmm. way better than what they say. What they see here. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this this software is very basic. I mean, Huawei has definitely made a lot of watches in the past, and Huawei also, I think, their watch GT uses their own proprietary OS as well. And I also had issues with that OS, like let's be honest. But that was like, I'm sorry, three years ago. Uh, I'm sure it's improved now. We just don't really like pay as much attention to Huawei stuff in terms of reviewing them anymore because of the issues associated with the company we've mm -hmm. talked about on this podcast before. Anyhow, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I really, truly, truly do not. There's a oop. <laughs> there's a lot of things I don't mm. like on this. So... I don't know what anyway. that was. Anyway, yeah. All right. So this let's watch is a problem. Let's see quickly oh, surface yeah. that for because yeah. people yeah, want to see. Yeah. So the one thing that I'm wondering about the watch is whether or not there's a digital display because it seems like all the watch you mean, faces. What do you mean a digital like, display? At, like analog. Um, like analog. Oh, like it's always face. on. Well, no, like it just like a digital like shows you the numbers rather yes. than an analog like I mean there's there's hands. like step, there's fifty mm -hmm. different watch faces to choose from and yes, there's quite a few here. So this one for example, I'm just gonna show it to this camera because I already turned off mm -hmm. the other one. But let's see if I can pull it up really quickly. Sorry. There you go. Okay, yeah. So mm -hmm. This is what I meant. I'm in between bars. <laughs> okay, so Govin in the chat says yeah. they've been waiting for the Surface Laptop 4. So let's show us the Surface just, Laptop 4. It's uh okay. I'm gonna move my mic a little. 
It is a Surface laptop. It is all the Surface Ooh. laptop that we have known and seen before. It's playing the Avengers trailer, which we often use for our battery testing. Are you running a test right now for the battery? This is battery, yeah. So I'm doing like battery stuff. It's not really catching focus. Um, yeah, so is it just is like 15. playing that on loop forever? It's just playing it on loop until we burn the battery down. So it is, hey, I like the overall style of the Surface laptop, you know? It's just, it's more of the same. Uh, so it's a very nice machine. This is the all black one. Again, if I saw this in a store, and certainly if I saw it like two or three years ago when we first started seeing these designs, then I would have been really impressed. It's just, I don't think it's keeping up with the, the world today. Like go look at an XPS 13 and those beautiful borderless screens and the way the screen just like hits the keyboard, like just like touches the keyboard. They're, it's so great. So great. Not a fan of this. Um, so check out, come back for our full review. I'll be doing the benchmarks. They look good so far, but it looks like fine. And if you're going to spend $1,000 to $1,500 on a laptop, why would you get something that's fine when you could pay the same money and get something that's much better? Like this, something that's so, excellent. Like the exactly. Excellent. And the shop in the chat says, when do you think the Surface Book 4 is going to get released? And what are you expecting from the product? probably end of the year um i so when we last reviewed the surface book i reviewed the surface book three and it just felt it felt like not much had changed with the overall concept uh that thing is really big you know has that interesting like curve on the uh on the actual angle of the screen that is makes it hard to fit in bags it's just like really inconvenient I have been wondering like if they go a completely different route with the surface book uh i think the detachable 15 inch screen is not something that is great for a lot of people. Uh, it is nice. Sherlyn, what are you doing? What, what is Sherlyn doing? My mic. I'm just asking, oh, making sure okay. the mic didn't change input when it. No. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it's. Uh, I, th I don't think they should do the same thing for Surface Book. I do think they should. Uh, if they go detachable again, like you really got to reduce those screen bezels. You got to make that device smaller because right now Surface Book is like a tank um in a way that is kind of wild to me and also like weirdly underpowered the surface book 3 was so i hope they can fit in better graphics too like it yeah they need to do more with that device i'm really i hope they follow up with the surface pro x design for the next surface pro line like that would be really cool too shave down those bezels people it's 2021 dell has been doing this since 2013 you know so uh, a Jacques DK uh, in the chat says, how's the battery performing so far? Can you Pretty say? good. Uh, Microsoft is saying 19 hours, and I think I'm, I'm halfway through, and it has like nine hours left. So that's pretty good. OK, so uh, the last question I think we should do before we move on to something else is, oh, what is it? I, I think Josh Such Davis said, is it advisable to buy LG smartphones uh, right now? And everyone is like, Wait hey, for the did deals. you yeah, did you yeah, did you hear that LG is ending all of its support? Someone I think that's who why is, they're asking. Yeah. yeah. So, someone who's completely fine said LG uh, died a hero, which is true. Did they? Did they? Not really, not really a hero. And that would be HTC died a hero with the hero smartphones. Um, <laughs> All right, let's move on yeah. to our other news. Look out for LG smartphone deals. I think we talked about that last week, right? There may be some fun deals for really powerful things, but let's move on. And I'll leave this up to I was, you. I was right? riffling, yeah, I was riffling through my old uh, devices mm -hmm. the other day because I want to declutter. And uh, yeah, I uh, <laughs> have an LG V30 somewhere. So that's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The V30 with the, the two cameras. Yeah. Think so. All right, anyway. uh, I'm gonna let you go. Yeah. Oh, shout out to Jedi Mind Trick also in the in the uh, chat for their nice comment. Shout out. All right. Ready, Ben? Yep. So there has been plenty of other news this week. I mean, the the hits just kept coming, but we're going to highlight a few of them for you. Uh, first off, Apple finally announced its April event that we've been anticipating. I mean, it started earlier in the week with like uh -huh. when you start asking Siri <laughs> when the next Apple event is, it would tell you the date. And I think that's when <laughs> Apple was like, oops, I guess we can't keep this, keep this a secret all that much longer, I think. Uh, so Apple's event is coming up on April 20th. 
I wonder if that's high time for something. Um, <laughs> very, but, uh, very symbolic. Apple vape, Apple vape tech. Mm. Yeah, who knows? Uh, there we go. Something. Well, I'll say. I think they showed off some videos for this event, and the videos all look like freaking AR overlays over the real mm. world. So I think they're being very, very coy. Like we're, we're going to see the AR glasses soon. Yeah, and we we like yeah. to play. We like to play. Guess the device or guess the news from the invitation graphic and stuff yeah. like that, right? And so the words on the invitation this time around were spring loaded. Uh -huh. with like some colorful squiggles that look sort of like a spring shape i guess uh, but you know what that that squiggle is well well first the word yeah. spring is like a play on the season spring and also component <laughs> spring so what nice way to go there pun apple but yes the video, go, what pun. did you well no if you, you look say? at this if you look at the actual invite right it, mm -hmm. it is a twisted kind of design if anybody mm -hmm. if you have seen the way vr painting apps work mm -hmm. that is the sort of thing you can create basically so it's like this is something where somebody could, could have taken a controller and just made a couple loops in the air this is what the 2d representation of that will be mm -hmm. but i'm sure they'll do something where like they take their phone and then all of a sudden they're just walking around this thing or show off the glasses by walking around one of these designs so yeah, we'll, we'll see. see something. I mean, we'll it could see. also just yeah. be like another iPad pencil scribble thing. It could be anything, it honestly. Could be. It could be. It's anyone's yeah. gets right now. Um, but yeah, so stay tuned for that. April 20th, we will be live streaming. Well, we can't, we won't be live streaming Apple's event on our yeah. site, but we will be there be live right after. commenting after. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, doing a post show. It'll be Chris Velasco, our Apple guy, and myself, yours truly. So. We'll be there whenever Apple Stream ends. And Apple Stream kicks off 1 p.m. Eastern on April 20th. Then if you don't, you, if you haven't got enough of the tech events and our live streams, I am pleased slash kind of, kind of like dismayed, I guess, to tell you yeah. that Samsung <laughs> announced it's hosting its fourth event God this damn year. It. God it's damn it. Stop. It's <laughs> announced another event, Galaxy Unpacked uh for set for april 28th and to my mind i was like this is the second event this month but actually the last <laughs> event was in march so actually is the second event in spring so actually they're, event. they're just yeah they're taking a break only four events this year yeah yeah four mm -hmm. events in as many months and uh you know it's time is infinitum for me and uh, i can't make sense of it all now i will judge everything at by by the samsung calendar now was it before unpacked after unpacked or around galaxy s21 anyhow uh last time they unveiled the a series phones at an awesome event awesome phone and mm -hmm. now we're not sure what to expect really i mean based on the rumor mill maybe uh -huh. some pcs um we're also like it might be time for it to see a, a foldable who knows and maybe tablets maybe wearables lots of stuff that we don't really um haven't seen from samsung this year yet i believe we have seen the galaxy buds pro or plus this year in mm -hmm. addition to the s21 phones so who knows what's to come my money i i shouldn't actually i do know what's to come but i can't tell y'all so <laughs> uh, just stay tuned um yeah but you know what phone has come out and has been announced the sony xperia one mark three Okay. Holy crap. Remember Sony? Remember how they make phones? They do um, make good phones, yeah. They make really good phones. I mean, last year they made the One Mark II that got rave reviews for being kind of like the prosumer's camera phone. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, this is basically the same More phone, the but same. like yeah. Sony has, according to Chris Velasco, who wrote this story up, according to him, Sony seems to have addressed pretty much everything we didn't like about the last one which was the mark ii now the mark ii didn't have 5g in the u.s it didn't have like the nicest design a little bit of an awkward design and the focus was on camera over everything else so maybe at the expense of some other software issues so hey if sony has fixed a bunch of those things like you know 5g uh and getting you some better software perhaps that that's like good news for people who love Sony's Xperia phones. It's obviously probably going to be pretty expensive as well. Um, you can check out Chris Velasco's article on Engadget.com for the details on the camera technology. 
the Mark III, just so you know some of the basics, this is a 6.5-inch OLED screen. Uh, and Sony says it's the world's first 4K screen to refresh at 120 hertz. So This thing's not going to have any battery life. Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would you do that? Oh, my God. Anyway. Who knows uh, if it supports refreshing at that resolution? I don't know yet. We'll see. Yeah. 4K um, on a screen that you can never really notice the 4K pixels. It's mm -hmm. so dumb. So dumb. Uh, 29 by 21. Bo 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 oh, loy, 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 loy. 21 by <laughs> 9 aspect ratio. Um, which is, you know, I guess closer to to traditional, I guess, conventional uh, flagships of today-esque opposed to the really tall ones they did a while back. That's still pretty uh, the, tall. 21 by 9 is still tall. tall. Yeah. It's super tall, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, it also packs a Snapdragon 888. So this is one of those high-end top of the line. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the battery is a bit bigger than before at 4,500 milliamp hours. So Devinder's point about this dying on you pretty quickly, probably. Um, 4,500 milliamp hour might last a while longer. Not at, not at 120 before. hertz 4K. Like, not I, for mm, that mm. screen. And also, I feel like they could have gone bigger, you know? So, <laughs> hmm. Not big enough. Six and a half inches, not big enough. I'm sorry, Shulin. I'm sorry. Yeah. This is yeah, a, not... I don't know what Sony is doing here, but yeah, maybe people who love their cameras. Would love this. Six and a half inches. Um, and hello. Good, hey, and uh, a side-mounted fingerprint sensor, which we already knew before. And good news for headphone jack fans. People keep asking about that. Um, every now and then, three point five millimeter headphone jack is still there. So that's good news. Hey, we are <laughs> going to have to test it, obviously, to know if it will perform well and be worth the money. Uh, no price information just yet because sony in general doesn't really talk price but last year the xperia 5 mark 2 xperia uh -huh. i think one mark 2 i'm not sure if this is a typo in the article xperia 5 no we're talking about xperia 5 a different phone now the yep. xperia 1 uh probably will be like ballpark of a thousand and more so yep. that's our guess we're not that last sony to... was so expensive yeah it's that's just they've always been expensive so mm -hmm. anyhow prosumer camera phone for sony fans who probably won't mind paying for all of those things hey speaking of phones cool phones oh. honestly <laughs> yeah sounds really cool tcl uh -huh. it's not a Give name, us the I name of anyone this phone. was expecting to hear uh -huh. me say when i said speaking of cool phones tcl famed maker of tvs um, the world's biggest tv maker like yes. they they are super successful now yeah They've been trying to make phones for like a while now. Chris Velasco says a, more than a year. I want to say like years now. Like years, if, years. If you yeah. consider the fact that they've owned BlackBerry and Alcatel for a long time now, years. Okay, um, but its own brand maybe like just over a year. So uh, it unveiled this week at an event a concept that it's calling <laughs> the fold and roll. Fold and fold in apostrophe in roll. roll. Yeah, yeah. Like toys are us, but fold yeah. and roll. And uh, it's exactly as its name suggests. This is a phone. With looks a cool. It looks really like cool. A and roll. <laughs> I don't even so know what else to say. It is a phone screen. You can unroll it into a phablet screen that's like eight and eight point eight inches, and then pull it, like extend it to a tablet uh -huh. screen that is ten inches. This is just a concept. I want to see this in a real working device, but it why was, this would be a cool idea. Listen, we're spending so much time talking about like garbage foldable phones from Samsung. <laughs> we we lived through a whole year of the original Galaxy Fold and like the fact that that was just a prototype. Now this is a device that, hey, it folds and it like extends a little. So it actually makes the device more of like a useful tablet. Bigger. This is like, yeah, bigger, bigger device. Like I feel like this, yeah. this is sort of the dream for a mobile device for me. Like something I can fit in my pocket, then expand a bit <laughs> when I'm sitting on the couch and then like, Tablet, tabletize, you know, when I uh, yeah. want to watch more video or something. I mean, look, and th this isn't like brand spanking new for TCL, right? Like, first yeah, of all, yeah. I mentioned that they're a TV maker because TCL, you know, with that heritage knows its screens. It knows its screen technologies. Um, and it's been trying to innovate. So it's actually shown off concepts like this before. It's yeah. done its own scroll style uh, concept where I think last year or earlier this year they uh unveiled a concept that unfurled two ways like it, it, like yes, a proper scroll that. 
uh-huh. and it opened really long. Um, <laughs> and then it's also done foldables and it's done trifold. So like a Z-shaped Ooh. foldable phone where you can fold it twice. Yeah. Yes. So so TCL is the king of concepts and king of yeah. wild, wacky concepts. They know how to catch your attention. <laughs> but you don't Whether... sound like you're impressed by this, Shalin. I mean, yeah. com- this is because... this is what our entire gadget lives have led to is these weird ass <laughs> screens that can extend and fold and do everything, you know. I just think like kudos <laughs> to them for getting everyone yeah. to be distracted by this shiny new thing because like shiny yeah, concept. fold and roll. They were like, we've done the fold, we've done the roll. Let's put it together. Let's, Let's do together. this. And I was That's like, just called innovation, Trillin. I don't know. I don't even. <laughs> I I. I... <laughs> I've seen some I like of their this. concepts I like this in the idea. past. Some yeah. of them were janky, let's be honest. Um, but here's the other thing, right? Like they've done so many concepts in the past. None of them have really come to pass. Like none of them have come mm-hmm. to be. They've not actually made any of these. But TCL has promised uh, around the time of CES this year, the company said it c- is committed to delivering and following through on at least one of its concept phones and making that available for sale this year. So we'll see one such thing. And my money is on a more traditional foldable, and it's weird to say a foldable is traditional, but like a a more tried and true and tried by its competitors kind of a device. Mm -hmm. It's more likely that what TCL is going to do is make it more affordable because that's been Mm -hmm. the company's style is to make like cheaper variations of flagships. I'm saying in five to 10 years, this is what I want in my pocket. I want a device that can like do all sorts of things. It does remind me of the days of like the multi sliders, like the Helio Ocean that I've talked about aren't before. You, yeah. Aren't you nervous? It is more prone to damage though. Oh yeah, most definitely. But we <laughs> like, here's the thing. If we can actually master this like flexible screen technology, so that it feels more like a magazine or something mm-hmm. and not just like a, like a heavy metal thing in your pocket. I do think that could be really cool, but that is my sci-fi dream. Uh, We need entirely (laughs) new, we need like liquid batteries to even make these things possible. So many, so, so much development has to happen. I want a phone that can fold in four, you know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. Um, But anyway, those are ideas that seem out of this world, but there's been more news that is actually out of this world and that is Google Earth. (laughs) <laughs> love the transition. Love oh, the our editor in chief Dana Woolman, who loves puns, is going to love me for this. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> Google Earth had its biggest update since 2017 announced hey. this week. In fact, just today, this morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, the embargo lifted. Google Earth is adding 3D time lapse videos. And that might sound very simple and straightforward, just saying like that. But actually, if you think about it, the amount of data that has to come together for Google to produce something like this. Now, these are time-lapse videos of, uh, you know, changes to the Earth's surface um, over decades, over the last Mm. four decades or so. And you can look at um, how things like the Amazon rainforest Mm. have changed. You can look at how a a glacier has retreated into, you know, itself or into the valley Mm -hmm. or into gorgeous. Because Google has this data too. Like that's what's interesting, right? Yeah. So at the briefing, uh, Google uh, Mm -hmm. also had invited guests from the agencies that had teamed up with for for this, including NASA, the U.S. Geological Survey, the European Space Agency, uh, and their respective uh, satellite projects so copernicus from the esa i believe copernicus <laughs> and the landsat from that's NASA copernicus and, and i'm sorry I copernicus can't, yeah, copernicus. Can't, 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 let's, 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 take, that, let's take that again take that again yeah <laughs> uh where was i so uh, with the blah 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 satellite something Coper- we'll okay start with um, copernicus yeah Copernicus and the and NASA and the USGS's uh, Landsat satellites. So it's the Sentinel one and Sentinel two under the yeah. ESA, and then it's Landsat seven and eight. I can't remember the exact numbers, but anyway, the images and, and the number of uh, images taken from these satellites. Uh-huh. Actually, a lot of them are already available to the public to do whatever they want with. Honestly, these agencies make it available, but Google has kind of compiled them and made them into mm-hmm. timeless videos. Because a snapshot in time can tell you one thing, but a time-lapse mm-hmm. video shows you like 
impact over time it tells you a like, story like yeah, yeah yeah it is really interesting i think one of the the examples they showed during the briefing was uh how las vegas has expanded uh as a mm -hmm. city over the decades and you can see how like it would expand west uh, eastward until it hits a mountain and then it stops expanding and it goes northward <laughs> so <laughs> no we can't we can't go over the mountain uh, can you too hard can you view these time lapses from anywhere or are they like yep. specific things that they so created this is a wish, a wish, a question I wish I had asked, uh -huh. which is the sort of operating requirements. But you can just go into the Chrome browser, type g.co slash time lapse to see these, and you uh -huh. can search any location you want in the world or take a guided tour that Google has curated mm -hmm. in themes like um, our forest, uh, urbanization, and that sort of stuff. Um, or you can, like, for me, I'm going to zoom right into Singapore because I know Singapore has developed a lot over the last for few sure. decades. I'm sure you could see a lot. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm really interested in charting the progress of the Amazon and yes. how much is still being like destroyed. I was born yes. not too far from the Amazon. Like that is, mm -hmm. that is my place, you know, and it is shocking to see like how much we are destroying it, not doing anything about it. Yeah. It's insane. I had an early access to this uh, timeless video stuff and I ran it mm -hmm. in Chrome and I will say like it that does take a while to load and like, you know, it, it I'm using like an ultra book so it doesn't have like the most powerful processors mm -hmm. or graphics. So it takes Isn't a while. Is this like, all it running in the cloud though? Like is it yes. processed locally but so, the data is so in the cloud? Yeah. Yeah, so mostly you're looking at internet stuff, but there is some, like, I will still say some lag, and I don't really know where the uh -huh. lag is coming from. Um, maybe I'm running too many browser tabs at the same time. But anyhow, uh, mm -hmm. you can also, not only can you view them for free, you can also download them. So the goal here, I think, on Google's end is to help educators, scientists, researchers have this stuff to help make their points clear. It's like, imagine if you're in the classroom and like your teacher is like, well, so in Las Vegas, they built more buildings. Over 20 years, they built 7,000 buildings. Like, you know, you can think about numbers or you can look at a video yeah. and, and have that displayed so clearly to you. So I thought that That's that was really cool. actually cool news from Google. Um, is this uh, only on the web, Sherlyn, or is it in the Google Earth app? Too? It's also in the Google Earth app. In the Google okay. Earth app, you can hit the ship's wheel um, icon, mm. and it'll take you to the Voyager platform where you can look at time-lapse videos there. That's super cool. I also want to see this in Google Earth VR. I don't know if that's mm. gotten there yet, but Google I've... Earth VR is one of the coolest things I've ever seen. You should uh, try that at some point, Trillin. Google Earth is actually a surprisingly yeah. cool and underrated product, and it's yeah. nice to see the, the, the company still pay attention to google earth we need to learn about the home planet that we're living on <laughs> you know looking at mars is fun but like we also need to we take can care send of some people home. let's send some people to mars please like let's just like, <laughs> yes. get the matter <laughs> <laughs> yeah but also we want we want to take care of our home yeah. and this is a really we'll good take care of the start. planet yes um hey davindra did you have anything yes. else in the land of chip news to tell us though uh, i mean some some fun stuff we saw some kind of with no fanfare amd is just like hey we got we got new Ryzen 5000 chips with Radeon graphics, and uh, these are the chips that you will see in some cheap desktops uh, because the the key is they have like they have some graphics capabilities. You could just plug this onto a desktop, plug in the monitor, and get going. Uh, you don't need a discrete GPU, but if you're building an actual PC, if you're building a gaming machine, it just feels like a stopgap, right? Maybe you want to build something until you can actually get a new Radeon card or a new NVIDIA card. This is just kind of a stopgap thing. So not super exciting. Uh, AMD does this for every generation of chips. But hey, the Ryzen 5000 with built-in graphics are coming soon. Uh, for a little more than the standalone Ryzen 5000. So yeah, that, that's exciting. I have mm -hmm. actually have some Ryzen hardware sitting around here that I need to like get to configuring because uh, I, I need I want to play with this stuff. Looks really cool. Do we want right. to move on to working on? Yeah, I'll just yeah. I'll just throw it over. Yeah. <clears throat> Let's move on to what we've been working on. I am in the middle of reviewing the Surface Laptop 4. This week has been hell for me. Uh, so mm. I hope I'm not working on much else. As of Tuesday at noon, I had like five or six embargoes yeah. already on the site. Like, ugh, make it stop. Sherlyn, mm -hmm. what are you working on? I The story that I was talking about burning out from and having writer's mm -hmm. block on, it's finally up. I'm very excited. Uh, it's still not the piece that I was envisioning it could be. I just generally <laughs> am very ambitious. But it is a story about what would the internet look like without third-party cookies. And... Uh, I have like a, 
I used to design websites. So like my understanding of cookies was from the first party cookie perspective, but I never really mm -hmm. thought about third party cookies. So I, I decided to like talk to a lot of people. I talked to a lot of big companies all on background because apparently nobody wants to come on record to talk about privacy yeah. and advertising yeah. because it's such a sensitive topic. Anyway, um, and, and the W3C and uh, pro people who are proposing some of these new methods, uh, alternatives to third party cookie uh, ad tracking and kind of just envisioned what the internet would look like when Google for real, for real, the disables third party cookie tracking. And yeah, that's my little explainer on that uh you should take a read if you want to know what's going on in that part of the internet which is basically every part of the internet um and then like continuing to work on lots of google embargoes the google earth stuff is one of them uh there was a set of google assistant updates uh that published yesterday i believe again time is really blurring for me and then you know more secret things i am testing out a new gadget but i don't really Ooh. want to talk about it just yet it's not under embargo i just don't really want to tell people about it just yet um <laughs> I want to surprise everyone so you just want to you just want to tease us and yeah, yeah. for no it'll be reason fun. at all i think yeah, people will like will, will like learning about this one but uh, yeah that's me just it. working and not telling people about it oh my god working 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 i hope you have a chance to take a break i have two days off that i had Yay! scheduled and hey the minute i, I freaking schedule two days off microsoft's like hey dude Hey, I got a got a laptop for you to review. I was every supposed time. to take every I time. Was, I know. I was supposed to take a week off, and Samsung's like, "Nah, fam, unpacked." <laughs> I'm like, "All right, Again. fine." Yeah. Again, never, <laughs> never unpack. Life. Actually, because you're never leaving Samsung. Never. Apparently, I'm never. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to our pop culture picks. What's up? Uh, what do you want to recommend, Trillin? So I, I see your pick, and I can't mm -hmm. wait to talk about that. I I think my pick this week might uh be one that you approve of. Okay. And this, I need to shout out to someone on Twitter. I can't remember the username off him who, who recommended me when I asked for comedy ideas. Uh, Mythic Quest on Apple TV+. Plus. Where were you, you last it? year, Sherlyn? Listen, I told you to watch okay, no. This. Yes. And no one else. Stop. Okay. I told you to watch it last year. Yes. And someone else on Twitter did. It's really, I know, I know you like, see, this is your approval, except for coming from That's a place good. of very That's weird. Good. Like, where were you last year? But anyway. Um, I specifically told you. Sherlyn Lowe to watch the show. No, you tell me a lot of things, D Davindra. I just get okay. like backed up to my cloud. Anyway, Set up the random Twitter user that Sherlyn listens to. <laughs> exactly, and also Apple TV Plus. But yeah, this uh -huh. is uh, from the people behind It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Who, by the way, I the show I just started rewatching, which is Ugh. it's making me laugh out loud. Pretty much. I can't. Episode. I can't watch that show, but I love Mythic Quest. So Mythic Quest is much better, I think, because it's. <laughs> more modern looking and involves like yeah. a slightly different like a more diverse cast to start with um most definitely it's always sunny it's a weird show because the best way i can describe it is grimy like yes, it is it's a very grimy, grimy show it's about grimy. losers um <laughs> who are who are kind of racist and awful but anyway mythic oh, quest yeah. is good mythic quest, mythic is, good. quest is from the uh, creators uh producers of it's always sunny in philadelphia so charlie day is an ep and uh mm -hmm. rob i don't even know how to pronounce his last name mech l any I don't know. McLehenny. Uh, <laughs> McLehenny. Um, but McElhenney. Okay. Stars, yep. stars, Charlotte Nickdow, N I C D A O. Uh -huh. um, oh, I love. She is so good. Yeah. She's amazing Australian uh, actress. Uh, and also uh, Danny Puddy. Um, Danny Puddy. Who is Abed I, in Community. I think you're, you're missing uh, Oscar <laughs> nominee. I think Oscar I'll winner, F. Murray Abraham. Is in this yeah, show. I was getting to it. it I was is... going from right to left in oh, this picture man. that we're looking at. But okay. Uh, yeah, F. He's, Marie yeah. Abram, also great. Uh, and basically a strong cast, really good writing. And this show mm -hmm. is about, for those who might not know, clearly everyone in the world apparently knows about this show now. <laughs> uh, it's about a, this uh, game developing company. So right within kind of our scope of coverage. Uh, and a bunch of people who are trying to like improve and enhance and keep updating their big game Mythic Quest. So kind of like, I don't know, Overwatch? No, not, they're not a It's an MMO. Game. It's an MMO. It's so an MMO. Like, I don't even know what the yeah. real world equivalent is. Uh, not Minecraft. Not like World Fortnite, of Warcraft War. type thing. Thank you. World like, of yeah. Warcraft. One of those things. Yeah. Um, And they like announced expansion. So season one's Raven's Quest. And so the reason I bring it up this week too is because uh, this Friday, I believe, they're releasing a new episode, Ooh. one of the like in-between season episodes, and I'm really stoked to watch that. The first of their in-between season episodes, 
um, was released a while back. It was shot in the quarantine during the pandemic. So good. It was so good. It was really well written. I didn't, like, you'd think you'd get tired of, like, Zoom shows, like, shows that were shot through, like, Zoom. But this was, like, it had a creative finale, and I really liked it. It was had a very emotional heart to it. Mm -hmm. So It was the only, like, Zoom thing, because it was produced early in the pandemic. That was, like, in March or April, right? And it is the only one that I think effectively used used the way we were living in that world. It's so wild. Very well. And like F. Marie Abram, I believe, also had to figure out Zoom for the first time. So like some of that <laughs> translated. And it was great. Um, this show is ridiculously funny. It's not as warm, heartwarming as Ted Lasso. It's a bit different in, in vibe. Mm-hmm. But it's laugh out loud funny. I just enjoyed it. It's too. It's not enough. I don't have an I can't wait for the new season. And then also there's a new trailer released this week. So Oof. hopefully we'll get to see. I mean, we'll get to see season two, May 7th, I believe is the date. Sometime in May. I can't yeah. wait. It's great. Love this show so much. I'm trying to get everybody to see it. It is, it, it, I think it kind of hits the range of Ted Lasso eventually, but it's also, yes. it's also it crueler. There. It's also yeah. like, you know, it's more it's LOL. Gone. Yeah. Like yeah. it's, yeah, it, it's a different, different type of vibe, but I do think it hits those points. Did you finish the first season, Trillin? Yes, I, I, I finished all of it. Everything. The so, quarantine episode, everything. Yeah. Yeah, one and one thing I'll tell people is like, hey, the first few episodes, it does take a while to get going. There's also like an episode in the middle that is just like completely like an indie rom com movie oh, in a way yeah, that the I love. love. It was yep. beautiful. I yep. I didn't even know what was going on. I was like, is this a different yes. show suddenly? What's happening? But then yeah. it's a similar theme and then it comes back full circle. Mm-hmm. at the end and it's beautiful it's really it well like done Kristen Milioti and Jake Johnson from New Girl and I love Jake Johnson I just want him oh, in yeah. more things so yeah, yeah he was hey watch too. Mythic Quest if you if you have watched Ted Lasso you want more comedy Mythic Quest is a good one yeah again not as heartwarming but freaking great <laughs> uh-huh what about you Dev what are you watching oh yeah I have been watching Invincible on Amazon Prime this is the new superhero mm-hmm. show from Robert Kirkman I believe you've seen some too Sherlin yes um and you yeah you talked to robert kirkman you yeah. interviewed him on the show so i've seen a couple of these have to say i was not i, I looked at the trailers for this early on and i hated the animation style and right the style was not what, great yeah it just seems like it's very cheap um mm-hmm. so basically it's a show that is meant to look a lot like the uh the original invincible comic but mm-hmm. there is no there's like very very little motion in the animation mm-hmm, at times mm-hmm. like sometimes the animation is just static images yes. people t- faces it's don't have 90s. it's very 90s very 70s very like justice Almost, league yeah. Yeah. uh justice league cartoon you know it just yeah. feels cheap as hell because i think because they have a huge cast which includes mm. jk simmons and uh, yes. steven yun oh and it's gosh. like ton of celebrities so many big names yeah so many big names uh, i'm liking the show i think it's a really interesting spin on superheroes i will say i think the first 45 minutes of the first episode <sighs> is a complete misdirection because it kind of yes. it just feels like hey we're just doing dc again we're just yep. doing justice league again with yep, like copycat yep. characters well, it's, it's hard and, to get through yeah yeah and then it changes like so Watch the first episode. Watch to the end of the first episode yeah. if you don't know what's going on with the show. Then I think it gets a little more interesting. Yes. Um, and it does kind of play with our notions of superheroes. And I like that. And I'm thinking yes. of like, yeah, maybe it is interesting how on streaming services, so between this and mm-hmm. The Boys and mm-hmm. Doom Patrol on mm-hmm. uh, on HBO Max and mm-hmm. even the like Justice League Snyder Cut, these things are only possible on streaming services. Yes. And I wonder if like there is a kind of a point there so I, i'll wrestle around with that i think invisible have you listened is a lot to of the fun. interview with robert kirkman because this did, is exactly what we talked about yeah yeah so did, so yeah. like for the listener and the viewer right now if you haven't already checked out our episode with the interviews uh of uh, robert kirkman and also the vendor spoke with the person behind calls on Apple mm-hmm. TV Plus, I guess. Um, yeah. Go check it out. And Invincible, like the Vinger said, takes a hard turn at the end of the first <laughs> Hard episode. turn. These episodes are so long. They're like 50-minute episodes. They're not like the bite-sized 30-minute ones very which I used to. So they, yeah. they're long. I'm digging it, though. I think the story is good. The cast mm. is good. I just, I wish to spend the a little more money on the animation. There. There's Maybe a shot can... that is a... Uh, yeah, there's a shot that's on Giphy that you know people have used to like share the show. It's yeah. literally invincible standing freeze frame on a building and the camera's panning out and like a flock of birds goes by him but if you just like take a second and look at those birds it, it is a static image of birds that they just dragged across the screen <laughs> they like don't even flap their wings right? just like yeah, they wings. didn't flap their wings 
it just looks like clip art. It looks like something Amazing. I used to make. You know, there, there was a Spider-Man game that existed in the '90s, like the Spider-Man Make Your Own Comic Game. <laughs> Literally doing that all over again on Amazing. Amazon Prime. Anyway, so I wish it didn't look bad, but I think it is worth watching. Check out Invincible. All right, I'll leave it to you to wrap. Yeah. Yep. Do the outro. Okay. Well, that's it for the episode this week, everyone. Thank you, as always, for listening. Our theme music is by game composer Dale North. Our outro music is by our very own Terrence O'Brien. The podcast is produced by Ben Ailman. You can find Devendra online at... At Devendra on Twitter or podcasting about movies and TV at the Slash Filmcast at SlashFilm.com. If you want to give me recommendations for TV shows, I will promptly forget and then bring up a year later. Uh, I'm at Sherlyn Lowe on Twitter. Email us your thoughts and feedback at podcastandengadget.com. Leave us a review, please, on iTunes. And subscribe on anything that gets podcasts, including Spotify. Cool. Chat, we can talk to you. Uh, talk about anything Yay. you have questions about, if you want. Uh, like a Druv in the chat says, have you guys seen Love, Death, and Robots? Yes, I have I seen Love, Death, and Robots. Yeah. I really like the... Uh, I think that there should be more... Um, yeah. more uh anthology shows i think that's yep. fun some of those it, it is a good anthology thing because I, I don't think everything works but if it doesn't work then hey you just move on to the next one right mm -hmm. and i think that's pretty cool exactly uh, i think that's actually one of the like biggest best things about the streaming era like yeah. it's hard to get an anthology show onto like some kind of network tv like it, it, i it just wouldn't work um uh but a, yeah anthology shows on streaming i think that's the perfect 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 place for it mm -hmm. and also that that series has uh an adaptation of the john scalzi short story when the yogurt took over which uh so good so good i have not read much of his stuff but man that short is great uh shout out quickly to uh chris turner who said awesome sh awesome show thanks uh jonathan anderson one of i think a regular now i see this name often i can poop twice a day yay uh, maybe you'll become a regular <laughs> just because your name is uh really fun to say yeah it is um, fun to say drew i think carmokar uh steel digital also a familiar one mark dell obviously uh mm -hmm. jedi mind trick on you y'all it's nice to see your names Come back. We want to. We want to get to know Thank your you, names more. So we do Gonzalo have one. Gonzalo Costa. Yeah. Yeah. Guns. Okay. So yeah, you take that question. <laughs> Gonzalo Costa. I see your question about the new Hub second gen. It's actually not that laggy or slow in my experience uh, because of the onboard machine learning chip assistance faster than before. Um, it is. Yeah. So far, I mean, I'm looking at it right now. That's why I'm looking off camera. But uh, it's pretty responsive actually faster definitely than my well, original home hub <laughs> so, and that's what you have to say about it yeah yeah so it's not are, laggy yeah are you it, still using what? it to track your sleep just nope. out of curiosity I moved it away because i just okay. like don't have Get that away. spot yeah what is, uh, so, what is going on with uh, ben's camera right now you're just like moving into like a trippy neon world from my view wait really i don't know if we're seeing that yeah it's just hilarious. I don't know. Uh, maybe. Oh, that, that's uh, that's our video. Oh, okay. That's our video platform. Speaking of, Jonathan Anderson mentions hilarious. they enjoy Apple TV content, but the interface is horrible. I will say, yes. like, Apple Agreed. TV on... Agreed. God, like, sometimes it does really stupid shit. Like, I was watching Mythic Quest, and then the up next stuff, like, when I'm finished uh -huh. with an episode, it stopped, like, five episodes in and, tr and tried to get me to watch For All Mankind instead by, like, mm -hmm. automatically. And I was like, wait, this season's only five episodes long? And I had to go mm -hmm. back and be like, no, there's still five more episodes to Mythic Quest. That's weird. Like, okay. That is it was really, very yeah. weird. It's also weird, um, hard to find shows. Like they're bad with the UX yes. in general. Yeah. Yeah. It's they, they, and it's not like other people haven't done all of the UX research yeah. for them. It's mm -hmm. like literally yeah. like I don't
Hello. Hey, Hello. everybody. Sorry about that. Yeah, that Something was got a, changed. There are a lot of moving parts that were it, like <laughs> the we started doing the live stream in what was it August or something, yeah, and we yeah. got it down mostly. But you know, there are still some uh, a little bit of weird hap weird things that happen sometimes. Um, we were shitting on Apple TVs in our face before, oh, yeah, we were. and uh, just really quickly. Just, I don't think you can see this video very uh, well, but I did a video of the bottom carousel where they are showing the best of Apple TV, uh -huh. and I scrolled through all of it and was just white men, yeah. and then and, and white also men. Tom Holland's movie that is poorly reviewed, one of the worst reviewed movies, white men uh, of a while, yeah, yeah. white yep. men, yep, that's Apple, a white men, a dog, <laughs> white dog, and the white dog. Yeah. A white dog. And then hey, I'm nice, I'm woman, that is weird. Woman, that POC is woman, what woman, the woman, hell? POC, white that man. Is not great. Oprah, are you kidding Tom, me? Now? Tom Hanks belongs with the people of color, I guess that's what they're saying. Um, but <laughs> oh <laughs> that is there's bad editorial happening on Apple's side. Yeah. Yeah, what's going on there? So anyway, no. um, there are issues with Apple TV's interface. Definitely a good point, uh, Jonathan Anderson, I believe. But good point. thanks for sticking with us through all of the technical. Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, if y'all have uh, any more questions left, we're, we're you know, happy to answer. We're just chilling. Um, oh, yeah. Someone said, yeah. Uh, should they get a pixel? It was a pixel question. Mm -hmm. um, uh -huh. Should they get the so Druv uh, in the chat says should they wait for the Pixel Five A or get the Four A? Now mm. there isn't a like set release schedule for it's Pixel gonna be a phones, while right? for the so, Pixel Five A too, right? Yeah. So hang on. Yeah. So the Pixel Five A was mistakenly reported mm. as canceled late last week mm -hmm. uh, or last week, and uh, it's act not canceled, it's actually just being completely like, the ex global expansion of the global rollout for it is limited to only the US and Japan. And so, Dhruv, if you're in the US or Japan, you can still consider the 5A. According mm -hmm. to Google, it will launch later this year around the same time the last A series was released. Mm -hmm. So, taking you back to last year, the mm -hmm. last time the A series was released, it's a bit tricky wording because it's either the 4A, which was released a little earlier in the year around May, I think. I can't remember. Um, I'll take a look. But you can also look it, look it up, look for our reviews. That's when it was released. Um, or the 4A 5G, which actually came out in October. So you either have one to two months to wait or you have like six <laughs> months to wait. So that's that that's the window uh... we're looking at. And depends on how much you need that phone. But uh, the yeah. 4A I've been using for a while and it's good. I don't really know what to expect with the 5A. Um, but they're calling it the 5A 5G, by the mm -hmm. way. So it's, you know, probably going to get 5G for one thing. And that's a good future proofing thing at this point. Like last the year, 4A 5G also had 4A 5G, 5G though. Yeah. There's also the 4A 5G, <laughs> but this year the 5A is uh -huh. like the 5a 5g you know what i mean like the mm -hmm. there's no differentiation anymore yeah. it seems like it but don't forget like the, the 5b model, and the 6a and uh the 7c there will, there will probably gotta... there will probably be um other flagships uh coming out too yeah. but i i mean i the 4a is cheap hopeful. just get the 4a just get the 4a and you'll probably get a good deal totally. on it now too yeah like there are great deals out there. Uh, yeah, exactly. I was going to say, if you wait till the 5A comes out to buy the 4A, you'll probably get the 4A for even cheaper, which mm -hmm. is amazing. Uh, but I am, I would hold out for better camera on mm. the 5A because that's the one thing that I want on this guy. The camera is great. I just want like a wide camera, like a mm. wide angle. Mm -hmm. So we shall see. Uh, right. so Jedi Mind Tricks, maybe maybe this is the last question. They said, "Did they? Do you think that they will refresh uh, Apple TV next week?" Mm, I don't know about next week. There are, there are rumors. Week. There are rumors, right, going around. I don't think it's next week either. But there are rumors that, like what they could do with it, and just in terms of, terms of like beefing up, maybe the graphics, maybe some other things uh, to make it a better game streaming type of machine maybe maybe mm. that could be cool yeah but there, there's not much they need to change i still don't know why is there a 32 gigabyte and a 64 gigabyte apple tv 4k i don't know is it is it just for apps i guess but the apps aren't that big it's a mystery we'll see mm -hmm. 
We'll but see. anyway, I think uh, I think we're nearing the end of yeah. our time. Uh, hey, everyone, reminder to come back to the Engadget YouTube channel or subscribe to get a reminder. Um, on April 20th, that is Apple's event. A Apple's event kicks off at 1 p.m. Eastern, and we will be live the second it's over on their end. So we're expecting like 2 p.m. Eastern or maybe 2.30. Uh, it'll mm -hmm. be me and Chris Velasco, so we'll answer your questions and have a chat like this. And then April 28th, uh, at 10 a.m. Eastern is Samsung's event. We will also be live streaming that. And we'll watch it with you. We hope it's as awesome as the last one. <laughs> so uh, maybe the last thing from the chat, and this was from a while ago. I think it was, um, who was it? It might have been like Steel Digital or something who said this. They were like, oh, wow, I, did, I totally didn't even um, get that uh, spring loaded. Mm -hmm. Like the drawing is a spring. The drawing yeah. is the spring. Yeah. It looks um, like a because it looks it's like spring. a cursive C also yep. like don't know why that would be but anyway thank you for everyone who stuck around um, I'll, I'm going to take us out uh, so the stream comes to you via our, via our video team which is led by Kyle Monk with Owen Davidoff, Julio Barrientos and Luke Brooks but it's powered by everyone in the chat really you guys are the ones who make it fun uh, hope that everyone who is just appearing for the first time comes back because it's really fun to have reoccurring um, people to talk to. Like that makes Definitely, it, yeah, yeah, that that makes it great. Um, and uh, if you've stuck around this long, rate the show on iTunes. People use the rating system sometimes just to like take out their beefs. So it'd be really nice please to don't. see some please nice don't. comments. Um, no, no beef. Twenty twenty one. No beef in in critical ratings. Twenty twenty one. In my burgers. And, yeah. Yeah. We'll see you next week. <laughs>